Hello gamers, Mugluck here, and today we are doing another episode of I Tried, where I try out another class that I do not main for a few hours using guides available on the internet within the Guild Wars 2 community and see how easy it is to learn and if the grass is greener on the other side or if it's crap and they've been lying this whole time. Today I bring you the Power Fresh Air Tempest. This build is a fresh air base for those who do not play Ellie. The whole gimmick is usually if you overload an attunement, there is a long cooldown to go back into that attunement. However, this one, you can overload air, go to another attunement like water or fire or whatever, fire like one spell and it will, as long as it crits, it resets air. So you can be like air, do a bunch of stuff, fire air, water air, and you just kind of keep doing that. So the rotation uh, doesn't use Earth at all. Uh, it is not too bad to learn as someone who was kind of an outsider to the Elementalist. Uh, really quickly here, I'll do a quick demonstration just to show I have a basic understanding of this. So it's got Condies. I've got Boons to simulate being in a competent group. Uh, we're going to start by summoning a Fire Elemental before the fight begins. And we're going to go Air and just wait on this. All right, so running in, overloading. I can hit two, three, E and G all at once, swap to water, fire the two and the three, so immediately go back to air. We can use two, three, and five while waiting and then overload it and not fire the two and three. Then we can go fire and I can do two, five, three, and then go back to air, two, three, and we'll use our Glyph of Storms, then overload air again. Use the two and the three again. Go water, just fire two, three, which resets air, back to air. Five, two, three, and I'm using E and G and overload air again. And then go fire, two, three, immediately back to air. Two, three, and overload air again. And go to water, two, three, and then go back to air. Two, five is up, that's a big move, we use that. And then overload air again. And we're sitting pretty uh, over 31k. Uh, so not too bad, as, and I am someone who does not consider them great elementalists. So let's talk about what's going on. Also, the background music, I apologize for that. Let's just turn that down right now. All right, so how does this work for someone who doesn't know Ellie? So as mentioned before, most of our damage comes from overloading air and then staying in air as much as possible. Unframe, thank you for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Uh, so if you don't play Ellie, the Tempest, their special ability is they can go into an element harder. So I'm already in air, but if I hit go into air again, he starts summoning a lightning storm. And it's doing uh, all of this and then lots of lightning strikes. Uh, I'll actually do it again over here so you can see. While you're channeling it, you're striking lightning around you. And when you finish channeling it, it leaves lightning on the ground in that area for a while. So as you can see, it's not quite melee range, but it's you, know, you can do it from a little bit further away. When you have used that move, when you have put it on cooldown, which I am going to demonstrate here, it is on cooldown, 20 seconds. If I go into water and then do one crit on this thing, air's up again. So we go to air, and then after we're in air for like three seconds, we can overload air again. So the first thing that I had to learn for this is the rhythm. And the rhythm is basically air, water, air, fire. Air, water, air, fire. Air, water, air, fire. We never used earth at all. Okay, so that's the first thing I had to learn. Second thing, when you are in air and doing anything, the two and the three don't interrupt it. So I can hit overload and hit two and three whenever they light up and they do their shots without interrupting what you're doing. So these are freebies. Whack-a-mole those whenever you can. Additional freebies. Feel the burn can be used at any time. And if you already have an elemental out, so hold on a sec, I'm gonna get the fire elemental out. Its ability that it has here called Flame Barrage orders it to do a special attack. That can be used at any time, even when you're in the middle of something else. Now, that's what you do when you're in air. If you go to fire, what do you do? You either do two and then three or two and five and three, but while your three is firing through the air, you change back to air, so the three lands after you're already in air. And the reason for that is anytime you, I believe, change elements or go into an overload, you get the uh, you get buffs, uh, and that buffs your damage. So uh, you want to you want to capitalize on that as much as you can. Whenever, uh, as I learned it, you want to use the Glyph of Storms. This uh, skill here, when you're in air, it does more damage in air. You want to use the Summon Elemental when you're in fire. It does more damage in fire. Feel the Burn can be used at any time. You can use pretty much whatever heal skill you fancy. I like Wash the Pain away, so I use that. Um, skills to use in each element. 
when you're in the air and waiting during the three seconds for overload air to come off cooldown, you fire the lightning orb if it's available, which is the five. You see it fires an orb and that orb keeps zapping as it's traveling. It's kind of like the frozen orb from Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 if you've ever played those. When you're in water, all you do is go 2-3 and go back to air. That's it. Very simple. When you're in fire, it's the 2-3 and the 5. Uh, but if you the, the 3 is traveling, you can swap to air before it lands to give it some bonuses. Um, that's the gist of it. The only overload in this build that we're using is the air one. We are not using the earth element at all, and we're basically just dipping in and out of the elements really rapidly. Now, this build, pretty high APM, pretty high APM. And part of that is when, for example, when your three is casting, like I'm gonna start casting my three, you wanna swap to air when it's still casting. When you're in water and your three is casting, uh, which requires a target, but when you're in the middle of casting something in water, you want to immediately swap back. And the reason is when you swap into air, there is a three second cooldown before you, or sorry, four second cooldown before you can overload the air. So there is a lot of when you are doing the last ability in water or the last ability in fire, you want to start casting that ability and change back to the air element while the ability is still doing the casting animation. It will not be interrupted. However, overload air can be interrupted. Until you see that bar finish and the big circle appear, you do not want to hit another button. You can move. You can, just to show you this, you can move around while doing it, and then it drops the circle. But you do not want to hit another button while it's overloading, or you will interrupt it, and that is a major source of your damage. You do not want to interrupt that. I had that problem for a while. So that is a big thing. Because of the constant, like, you know, water 2-3 at the same time as air 2-3 at the same time as 5, E at the same time as anything else, overload air, you can finally breathe for a second, and then fire 2-3 as the same time as air... There's a lot of moments where you're pressing two keys at once. That's not necessarily a bad thing. This was not that hard to understand, especially compared to its siblings, the Weaver and the Catalyst, which were insane. This was definitely on the higher side of APM. Uh, it was definitely on the higher side of APM. Uh, I don't know if I would say it was Berserker levels, but it was just under that. Because, they, like I said, they, you're constantly hitting multiple keys at once. You were in fire hitting keys at the same time as you were hitting go back to air. You were in water hitting keys at the same time as you were hitting go back to air. And in air, uh, you were hitting two and three every time they're up, even if you're in the middle of doing other things. Uh, feel the burn and the second part of the Glyph of Elementals you were hitting at the same time as anything else. So as someone who, you know, mains other classes, this felt pretty high APM, but not impossible to play. But I don't know if I would recommend this to someone that, uh, you know, had like slower hands or reflexes or something like that. Also, it wasn't the same rhythm every single time. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Every time I went water, all right, every time I went water, I would go two, three, back to air. But then, is five up? Is Glyph of Storms up? If one of those is up, I use one of those, then overload the air. Then, you know, I'm hitting two and three whenever they're up. That's always the same. Then I go fire. Now fire is the elite up, is five up. That, you know, because we want to hit the two, the three, the five, and the elite in fire. Do those in whatever order we can, and then go back to air. And once again, is five up, is Glyph of Storms up. So it's not the same thing every time. So because of that, as someone who is not used to this, I was having to stare at the bottom of the screen a lot. I could not just focus on the rotation. So as a result of all those things, I was having to look at the bar down here constantly, which felt extremely similar to when I played uh, literally any Mesmer, because I was having to stare at the pips in the corner constantly. Like, it wasn't like, oh, eventually I'll just memorize, like, 5, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. No, because it, it was like, sometimes it was F3, 2, 3, F2, 2, 3, F3, 5, 2, 3, F1, 2, 3, 5G, F3, 5. So, you know, because it would change based on some of the, because some of the skills weren't up every time. So there was no, like, 
permanent rotation uh, that was just like the same on every loop. You know, there were some skills that were the same and some that were different. So uh, I, I felt very much like I was having to look at the bottom of the screen a lot. Now, fortunately, it wasn't too bad. I would say the survivability of this build is like 1.3 weavers. It is a little bit healthier than they are uh, because this trait here gives 300 vitality, which if you look at my health down here, oh, I need to leave combat. For some reason, our golem is mad. I don't know why. Uh, so I've got 17.6k health. If I change this, I got 14. So we're getting like 3,000 health from this. Additionally, we're constantly throwing out Soothing Mist. Now, honestly, Soothing Mist is not doing a lot here. We are not building, he stacking healing power. So although we're constantly pulsing out like a weak regen, it's like 250 healing per second for the whole party combined. So it is a tiny bit of survivability. It's worth mentioning, but it's not huge because we are not running healing gear. The extra health is nice. You can, if you need more stuff, you can swap things out. Like if you needs but you could use like armor of earth for survivability plus stability in this build you can't really take the uh trait to give you stability every time you overload because it competes with the trait that increases your damage by 10 percent so you're not going to take that if you're dps you're going to take this because it's more unga more bunga so yeah very effective did not feel difficult to learn but did require me as a new ellie player to stare at the bottom of my screen a lot it is pretty high apm it does have some utility options if you need more cc you can bring I didn't talk about CC basically air four and also water four those are easy to remember are both a wave that does like 150 break bar not a large amount but better than some classes uh you can swap out one skill for armor of earth in order to bring stability lightning flash for better mobility arcane wave for more CC if you need it uh glyph of elementals can be swapped for rebound if you're on a fight where you need that for any players who are thinking about playing Ellie you don't know what this does basically this gives the whole party a buff for five seconds and the buff is basically if I would die how about no and you rebound back up and it's very useful on a few encounters when there is like a big one hit kill mechanic coming at the group and your team has failed it and you know you're about to die and you can hit it and just get a do-over and you can keep going. Uh, however, unlike, you know, stability or a res where you have all the time in the world to do it beforehand or afterward, this has very precise timing. Yeah, it has to be done five seconds, with, you know, before the death, five seconds or less before the death. So it is a skill that has a skill requirement. However, uh, it is something unique to Tempest. It is not something that just, you know, anybody has. So that's cool. That's a, a unique bonus to the thing. Air overload provides combo field lightning in each sleep you're True. Uh, yeah, air overloads make lightning fields, which uh, anyone one that is doing leap or whirl uh, or blast combos can help with more CC. So it can contribute more CC to a group without even meaning to. So uh, adding it to the list of what we've tried here so far, we have got the Fresh Air Tempest and the benchmark DPS. What does Snow Crows think that this thing is capable of? Uh, it's actually the top thing in the game, according to them right now, at 45,917 DPS. How high did I get in the hour or two I played it. I saw 33k on Bone Skinner, but Bone Skinner is a bit generous because that special action key, so I'll round it down to 32. Still really freaking good because I played this third like just over an hour. Gear is full Berserkers. Power Condi, we did a power build. Was it easy to learn? It was pretty easy to learn. I would say easy to medium. CC, average. Miscellaneous utility. Rebound if you bring it. And the other stuff is like, you know, more CC, everyone has CC, uh, more uh, stability, your healer could give you stability, and it's not group stability, it's just yourself. So, I mean, it, it you know, can AoE cleanse with, what is it called? Wash the pain away, that is an option. Is it ranged or melee? Mm, mostly melee. The overload, it does have ranged options with the scepter in hand, which we were running. Um, but we, the overloads are all melee and that's where most of your damage comes from. Intensity, I would say high. It, it was, it was uh, near, like, not the highest, but high. Fun? It's all right <laughs> to me. It was all right to me. And I, I forgot to talk about the gear. What we ended up using, uh, this was our stuff. It was full berserkers, runes of infiltration on the armor with force and impact on the weapons. Additionally, we were running the relic of the fractals. And you're, there's only one weapon set because elementalist. And we were running scepter and warhorn. And you may notice my scepter has the wrong stats. It's because I did not have a legendary scepter. So I had I used an, a one single item that had the wrong stats, which may have impacted the overall numbers by a tiny, tiny amount, but everything else was full legendary berserkers. But yeah, that's it. Uh, so if anyone's thinking of playing this, I would say among the recent Ellie classes I played, 
where I tried Quick Kata and Weaver and now Fresh Air Tempest. This was the easiest one to play. It was the only one I think I was able to break 30k on. And I was able to do it within like a half an hour. It was it was high APM, but not in a hard to learn way. I actually had Valen himself was in my chat and he was like, you want to go air, water, air, fire, air, water, air, fire. That was huge because I was looking at this long loop on Snow Crows and someone just telling me it's it's this one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three. That made it so much easier for me to process and my my smooth brain and comprehend it. That was extremely helpful. Uh, so it was not too hard to learn. Did it feel like great to play? It was fine. If you want to run around and shoot lightning and just constantly zap things, it, it could be a lot of fun if that's your thing. If you're looking for someone who's like, you know, got a lot of utility, it doesn't feel like it's this to me. Because like, uh, you know, let's say you're doing 30K on this guy or 30K on the scrapper. Scrapper's got a function gyro that's going to revive people and save lives if there's a problem. If this guy sees an ally go downstate, he'll be like, wow, bzzzt. that's a damn shame. Bzzzt. I hope someone helps you. Bzzzt. Like that, that, that's it. That's the fresh air tempest. You, know, you could do a manual res like anybody, but that's it. Why rune of infiltration? It was just a hit crit cap. There was one guide I read that was rune of infiltration uh, combined with fury and food to hit, get 100% crit. Um, and then force an impact on the weapon. There was another guide we looked at that was Rune of the Scholar on the gear and force an accuracy on the weapons. And accuracy helped hit the crit cap. So th there's different ways of doing it. I don't know if one is mathematically better than the others. That was what I ended up doing from this one. But yeah, it, it was not too bad uh, to learn or anything like that. I would say if you've got like arthritis, probably don't touch this with a 10 foot pole. Uh, but if you enjoy the idea of flinging lightning at people, also pretty good AOE. The AOE is good too. For example, I can pull up the rings for a second. Whenever you do overload, it hits this area right? Like it's bombarding any enemies in this area with lightning bolts. So it was pretty easy if there was multiple targets to hit all of them with the lightning uh, at any given time. So, I mean, that was that was pretty neat. Uh, you know, it's very, very generous radius for the lightning strike. So that that was awesome. So that felt good. Also, you know, feel the burn was just an explosion around you that did a bunch of fire. You know, that was easy. Uh, the lightning storm thing, while, well, you know, a smaller storm, it would, uh, it would also uh, hit a sizable area. You know, so there was a lot of AOE in this kit that had a large circumference, and so it was easier to hit stuff. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. You know, moderate CC, except when people do unexpected combos, which can be kind of cool. Its main thing is damage. It's a little sturdier than other elementalists because of the extra 3k health on this specific build and the very minor soothing mist healing that's always, uh, you know, going uh, going along. You frequently have access to at least some CC because your air four and water four both are a CC tool. Fire didn't have any, but you're only usually in fire or water for a few seconds and you're in air the other like three quarters of the time. So you frequently have access to something for CC, which is a good feeling as opposed to like when I play, when I played Weaver, I'm not trying to bully Weaver this time. It's just, it's coming so naturally. When I was playing Weaver, you know, like the CC on demand, it just didn't feel like it was there unless I like knew the break bar was coming and I pre-swapped to an element and then I you know lowered my damage for the next 10 seconds and I, or I summoned an ice bow or something like that. But this, you know, it always had something, which is nice. Yeah, uh, I think at this point I've covered everything. Uh, those were my thoughts after trying the Fresh Air Tempest. If you want to tell me anything that I did wrong or correct anything, please put it in the comment section down below. Any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, and I will fight you there.